Well, firstly, a great welcome everybody to Gemini Pereira, one of the legends of the club who played with us for almost a decade through the 90s and the early part of the 2000s. Uh, an imposing record that he, he set. He won the club championship six times, the batting average five times, the bowling average about four times, played in three premierships and two championships. Welcome, Gemini. It's a great pleasure. Oh, pleasure is all mine, uh, Lee. It's uh, great to be here and uh, more importantly, um, great to recall some of the memories, uh, one of the major parts part of my life. Well, this all started for you in <laughs> Colombo, where you were born just on the outskirts of Colombo, where you learnt your cricket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> Maharagama, the suburb that I was living in, it was just in the metropolitan area of Colombo. And um, I went to a school called President's College initially till um, grade five, as you would call it. And then uh, through a scholarship, I went, uh, I got qualified to uh, enter uh, without being biased, probably the best school in Sri Lanka, Royal College, and uh, the number one government school. And uh, there was absolutely nothing to do with cricket, really. It was only through the academic qualifications. And uh, then um, I ended up playing cricket uh, throughout my life at Royal College and uh, ending up captaining the team. And uh, from there onwards, <clears throat> I got um, selected for the Sri Lankan junior teams, the under 19, initially to tour UK in 1992. And then um, end up captaining the Sri Lanka new team under 20 the following year uh, with a fantastic uh, list of names. Uh, the 14 players that were selected to represent Sri Lanka under 20, which I was the captain, uh, 11 players ended up uh, representing Sri Lanka, including Mahila Jayavodhana, Russell Arnold, Shaminder Wa. So yeah, that's, that's, that was a great honor. I could imagine. Um... After you got through your junior cricket, uh, what happened there? Did you play um, for Sri Lanka in, in any of the uh, emerging teams or uh, first class? Yeah, under 19. Um, uh, <clears throat> I represented the Royal College High School or the first 11 team that they called it. Uh, it's amazing. Some of you might not know Royal College play against St. Thomas's College, which is uh, called the second oldest schools cricket encounter in the world. Mm -hmm. And the oldest schools cricket encounter that has been uh, happened uh, without any interruptions, even during the World War, during 19, early 1900s and 1940s, and uh, still uh, holds a record. Because the pandemic, they haven't had the chance to play this year in normally where it takes place in March, but they, they are planning to, um, have it ended this month because they don't want to break the trend uh, and keep that record. So I got selected to play that match, which everyone calls that's a pinnacle in uh, school cricket in Sri Lanka. And uh, oh, if you're a royalist uh, at the age of 15 <clears throat> to represent the under 19. So uh, it was only um, onwards and upwards from there and ended up captaining that team and captaining that match. And uh, I um, scored a 144 to save our college from certain defeat in my third year. And um, so I like you, I like you, I asked the uh, under 19s were my first representative teams as far as Sri Lankan cricket is concerned. And uh, I got selected to tour uh, UK in 92. And um, then uh, the following year, Singapore, Malaysia, which I mentioned some of those names that I captained. And um, uh, I was representing Singhali Sports Club, uh, some of the biggest names uh, that have been produced to Sri Lanka cricket, including Mahela, Arjuna Ranatunga. Uh, I can go on till the cows come home tomorrow. There's some of the players that I've been representing from that club. And uh, even today, um, <clears throat> half of the team is from SSC and uh, Singhali Sports Club. And um, I was a member when I uh, left to Australia at the age of um, 18 plus at the time. Okay. Leaving Sri Lanka to come to Australia, how did that come about? Because of that hundred that I made during that uh, big match, big encounter or between Royal and St. Thomas's, 
my third year, uh, I got a scholarship to um, uh, to VIS, uh, which Dev Watmore was in charge at the time, yep. Victoria Institute of Sports. And uh, I think uh, because Dev is also from Royal College when he was in Sri Lanka. Mm-hmm. He went to, up, I think, up to grade three. So he had a close association with Royal College, his uh, alma mater. And uh, some of those players who were there in Melbourne at the time, Ravi Ratnayak, uh, who obviously was a gun at Preston, and uh, he was very close with Dev. And Dev was coaching Paran also at the time. And um, then Ron Paul Pille. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think had a hand in me ending up at Preston, but uh, yeah, they obviously got in t- got in touch with uh, Richard Norris, who was uh, a pillar uh, in uh, getting me down to Preston, along with some of the, the those Sri Lankan names and uh, <clears throat> the Sri Lankan family who looked after me uh, when I came to Melbourne initially was the Ephraim family. There were two brothers and uh, Adrian and Jerome, mm-hmm. uh, so. I was residing at Jerome's house, uh, long way to travel to Preston, mind you, from Hampton Park, yes. uh, down in uh, past Derinong. And uh, but those were the names that were influential in me getting down to Preston. And um, yeah, then that's all it, uh, how it started. Fantastic. We we sort of um, <clears throat> were indeed fortunate to get you at when you're at almost, uh, you hadn't even hit your prime uh, uh, as, as a cricketer, but as a youngster, it must have been hard adjusting coming to a new country at that time. Yeah, but uh, the people that I was associated with, uh, they made it so comfortable for me. And uh, um, yeah, I actually rather enjoyed it more than looking at a challenge, uh, really. Uh, like I said, traveling from Hampton Park, but Ron Paul Pillay did most of the driving for me uh, at the time. And uh, because he was living in Morabin and uh, all I had to do was to get to Morabin and he was taking me for training and uh, um, to all the matches. Uh, but um, yeah, I think more than a challenge, uh, it was uh, really enjoyable for me um, because the people that I was associating with made it so much easier for me. Yes. So, so you joined the club, um, and it was very successful. Off, you know, some great players, Ravi, Lohit. There was uh, emerging players, the Harveys. There was the experienced players, um, uh, the likes of uh, Dale Carpenter, and then we recruited uh, a whole raft of other players through that sort of time. Um, you played under some very interesting uh, coaches during that period. I think Steve Harvey was was a coach one year. You were there. Yeah, yeah. Before uh, before I um, get to Steve Harvey uh, Lee, um, my first year at the club uh, in 1993, and uh, like you mentioned, that was like a golden era for Preston, early 90s and uh, late 80s, and uh, like you mentioned, those names uh, they were they were so big in sub district. But uh, incidentally, my first year I played in the seconds. Yes. Uh, I enjoyed that year um, under Brian Duggan. Okay. It's an amazing bunch of players uh, in the seconds at the time. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it's unfortunate that some of the names I cannot uh, remember, but uh, Darren Oliver, uh, Peter Cawthorn, McCarpy, uh, Brian Duggan, Billy Moore, yeah. um, Ron, uh, what, uh, Santa Lucia, Horatio, and uh, gee, some, some of the names I can't recall, but. Uh, I think I ended up playing a handful of games, maybe six or seven, six games uh, in the seconds. <clears throat> and um, that year, I wasn't part of the first uh, um, in, in 1993. Uh, but certainly, um, I got to know a lot about the club that year and they're playing in the seconds. And uh, yeah, that's how I um, started. And the following year, I got the call from Richard Norris that uh, to come and play and that the very next year I was in the ones. Fantastic. Well, I was smiling. Uh, Ryan Duggan's one of the characters at the club, one of the funniest men I've ever met. Uh, did you find that uh, the funny guy, dry humour? Yeah. 
going back to uh, the comment that I made, some of those players have made me, uh, some of the people that I associated with uh, on and off the field made it so much easier for me. That was really enjoyable getting on the field uh, with those names and Brian was behind the stumps and uh, <clears throat> my first game, it rained that hard um, and you could put your finger into the surface really. It was so soft and uh, I came as a known leg spinner but uh, I was thinking here we go, the ball was like a bar or so. There was no way that I could grip the ball and um, so uh, when Brian gave me the ball to bowl, I knew if I tried to bowl leg spin, uh, it would have probably landed on the next surface. Uh, so I uh, decided to hold the seam up and bowl um, um, with Brian up on the stumps. And uh, Brian said, you are quicker than some of our fast bowlers, so you might be able to open the bowling. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, playing uh, playing uh, three months with those names, uh, like Billy, Peter Gawthorn, Darren Oliver was a very serious character, which I learned a lot on the field and off the field. Um, he was trying to keep me on a lid uh, because I'd like to enjoy every given opportunity. But yeah, certainly Brian uh, was one of the best characters I've met uh, at Preston. <laughs> yes. Um, and from there, you came under Steve uh, uh, for probably for the one year, I think. And then um, uh, Steve Moy, coach, and then Greg Hobber. Uh, so uh very very successful players and and coaches as well um so your first year in the first one the batting average uh i saw at uh, just a uh, at 41.8 which is not a bad average for your debut season in in, in club uh you then followed that up over the next uh, three years uh, um and won the club championship uh three years in a row uh, i must sort of comment on your point well, because you won the bowling average the first year at uh, 28 at 17.14. So you adapted very quick to these the, uh, sub-district wickets. Yeah, but, um, like I mentioned, those few games in the seconds the following year uh, really gave me a good idea of um, the standard about sub-district and uh, the mindset that you have to be because you were up against some very competitive players. Uh, when I, I'll never forget my first game in the ones. Uh, <clears throat> it was against a very old rival, against Ivanhoe, oh. and uh, which I really enjoyed playing and um, against and uh, associating with some of those players uh, after the game. Um, Greg, Greg Hobart was the captain in 94, and um, that first game at, at Ivanhoe, uh, we were none for 100 after, uh, at, the, at the break. Mm -hmm. uh, Greg and Steve Harvey put on 100. And uh, the gun left hand is probably the best left hand I've seen in any form. Uh, Ron Paul Pille uh, was down to go at uh, number three. And I was privileged to be given to bat between Rohan and Ravi uh, at number four. And Ravi was number five. So the three left handers, the Sri Lankan left handers were batting three, four, five, and um, yeah, so none for 100 at, at T, and then um, <clears throat> I went maybe not long after the break, and uh, Rohan was uh, already going great guns at the time. I took the guard to face the first ball, uh, and I think the name of the wicket keeper, Brian Donahue, I think, the, uh, I even know, the wicket keeper, Donahue, and uh, <clears throat> um, there was an off spinner who was bowling and I took the guard and Donna who asked me, uh, how many did you get in the morning? So uh, I had no clue what he was talking about. Uh, you know, as it was, uh, the game started at 10 o'clock in Sri Lanka or 9.30 for that matter. Uh, when sub district game started at 12 o'clock, uh, that was funny for me and uh, uh, starting that late. Uh, but um, you know, my first ball, I can remember I drove through cover for four and then uh, then he raised his eyebrows and uh, he was asking J Jordan, Grant Jordan, who was uh, one of the players that I even know. Uh, uh, well, there is another left-hander who can play. And uh, then I, I, I was still bemused what, what he was going on about. And then I made a 50, uh, Ron showed 100. I think he put on about 116, about 
you know, not many minutes. And uh, like I mentioned, uh, there was that off spinner who played for Australia, Jeff Moss, mm -hmm. uh, bowling for Ivanhoe. And uh, on the right hand side of the Ivanhoe Pavilion, there were so many trees. Um, um, and Rohan Paul Pillay was pointing out at every tree, and he was sitting exactly that tree uh, <laughs> against Jeff Moss and against the turn. And uh, uh, so after I uh, after the game, I asked Greg Hoba, um, <clears throat> you know, I have a question. Um, this wicketkeeper asked me, how many did you get in the morning, which still uh, works in my head. And I, I was trying to get an answer. And then Greg said, uh, you know, under 13, under 12, under 14 happens in the morning. So maybe because of my size, I think uh, he was having to, go, uh, he was having a small banter at me. <laughs> Good story. Good story. <laughs> Now, we, uh, <clears throat> we won't go through every season or every game, but there's what are the standout uh, games you sort of look back on? You know, obviously the championships you performed very well in. Um, take us through what, what sticks in, in your mind. I think we lost a championship final. Kind of that raft, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> those days uh, championship finals were taking place at uh, Caulfield most of the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Caulfield was a very good batting track. Uh, come in March and uh, maybe early April, uh, we were playing against Altona. I can tell you another story, Lee. I think you'll have to edit and uh, get all these things in, in one bracket. But uh, the year before that championship final game against Altona, uh, um, let me put it this way. My first year, Greg Hobart captain, and then Steve Harvey, uh, had the difficult task of uh, molding a side when all the good players left in one year. Mm -hmm. Ron Paul Pille, Ravi Ratnayakar and uh, some of those names. And uh, I think that year we were playing against Altona and um, we were chasing uh, not a big total, about, about 117 in one day. And uh, I was out for a duck and there was this guy, Katija, uh, who uh, was having a go at me. Uh, all day and uh, so um, when I got off for a duck he made sure that he followed me to the boundary line and we were struggling uh, I think it was 7 for 110 and then Dale, Dale Carpenter got uh, some runs and somehow we chased that total down and uh, by that time I think it was my third year uh, so I have learned a bit about Australian cricket and how to uh, give something back when someone talks back to you. And uh, <laughs> so with this, this guy, Katija, uh, dropped a sitter uh, off uh, cheaper. And uh, then I shouted from the boundary line, what did you have for breakfast? Uh, butter, maybe. Uh, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And uh, then after the match, uh, Preston got across the line, or a very close match. And uh, this guy jumped the fence and came to uh, came and grabbed my collar. So then the players got involved and that was the end of it. That, uh, but the following year, we were playing Altona in the championship final. So uh, there was a score to settle yes. uh, for me. And uh, so on a Saturday, we were chasing together all, uh, in all parts. The 280 or I think we were chasing. And uh, on a very good batting track um, uh, at Caulfield, uh, one thing, in sub district cricket, sometimes uh, I was able to um, contribute uh, to the team, particularly in the finals, mm -hmm. uh, because I enjoyed it playing the finals because it was Saturday, Sunday, the very same week. But during the year, it was Saturday and next Saturday. So it was a completely different track that you play on, whether you batted on Saturday the week before and then you had to bowl. So uh, then Maybe you bowl the week before and uh, then the bat the following week. Uh, two different tracks altogether. But I enjoy playing finals because you are playing on the same track. So I knew because I had bowled on the on the, the day before that it was still a very good batting track. And I really gave us a chance of chasing. Uh, and um, by that time, Steve Harvey had uh, given it to Steve Malloy mm -hmm. uh, as the captain, I think. Uh, so we had a quite... A, strong batting lineup so i always came and uh, it's funny uh, i think that here me and ranga de silva we were traveling together all the time to the games and um, 
we came fairly early for the match on the second day mm-hmm. uh we normally we just get in there or sometimes more, we are late uh we boys have already got on the field to do their warm ups and uh, i can remember someone asked me cam i think uh, you've got something wrong uh, you know you may have got up on the wrong side of the bed then i asked why and um, they told me you're early for the game uh to see that the daylight savings are changed okay uh <laughs> which i had no idea but um yeah i really gave us uh, gave us a chance of chasing that and um, and like i mentioned uh, that altona incident the year before uh, was really working on my mind and uh, he was playing in that championship final so um, i mean <clears throat> and after that it was uh, you know we chased it down fairly comfortably and uh, i think we were three for 50 when i you know, when ranga walked in we were three for 50 i went at number four uh, we were 50 out for three after 20 odd overs and uh, uh, in an 84 over game to chase 280 uh, uh, that day i was seeing it big and um, i was timing it pretty well as well and um, Yeah, I think we got it with I don't know maybe close to twenty eight thirty overs to square. Yeah. It's Ranga getting sixty five uh, from the other end. That uh, yeah, that knock I remembered for a very long time. <laughs> a, a very sweet victory. <laughs> yeah, very- uh, uh, Katija came on to bowl. I think when I was on hundred and maybe twenty at the time, and uh, then uh, that uh, battle never stopped from the. previous year he wanted a short leg field um when he came out to bowl he was uh, maybe slower than gentle medium when the silmidon field was walking towards uh, me i said uh, look i hope uh, you are single because you don't want to stay here i'm seeing a big and you are going to go to the boundary line before the ball so get out of here <laughs> and you uh, you want to leave you want to say that <laughs>